It's Sean from Shooty School. I just released my Easy Drama 3's Drums Tab course. It's a full curriculum for beginners just starting out all the way to advanced users. From simply defining features to advanced workflows so you can get your own custom drum tones from Two Tracks Easy Drama 3. There's 15 videos, over two hours of content. I zoom in and out of the screen so you can see the details and smaller text, and I'm on screen with you while you watch the course. So there is a presence of energy, momentum, and encouragement. Check out the reviews at shootyschool.com and consider picking up Shooty School's Drums Tab course and bring your Easy Drummer 3 skills to the next level. Check out a free video from the course, the link is down there in the description, or come over to my YouTube channel Shooty School to get a vibe of my teaching and production styles. Rock on. If you're not watching live, waiting for this stream to start, and you're watching the restream, go ahead and fast forward to the five minute mark where I start the show. But before you do, here's some resources where you can go to get support or socialize about Tune Track stuff. On Facebook, there's the Tune Track Users Group. It's a great community. Jay Rock over there is great with keeping up to date on Tune Track's press releases and product announcements. There's also the Tune Track Easy Drummer Group on Facebook. It's it's easy drummer only and it's a fantastic place for beginners to go or if you want to hang out with me and get my support I have the shooty schools tune track speak easy Facebook group I show up there once a day I provide support and socialize and I also have a discord server Besides that, I do have a members program. There's two paid tiers. They're both really inexpensive where you can see either pre-release content or get exclusive content and support from me personally. Also keep in mind, the first Saturday of every month, I do this stream live. So subscribe so you can get into the chat. You can shoot questions at me. Sometimes the users in the chat dictate what happens in the stream. Sometimes I have some prepared content Anything goes, anything can happen. So hang out for another moment or two and we'll get this stream started.
What's up, everybody? It's Sean here from Shooty School, uh, typically teaching and showcasing tune track products. So, Small Tubes, what's up? Welcome, Braxel. Welcome, Small Tubes from Virginia. Mike from the UK, another across the pond. It's my second. I wonder if Mark's going to show up today. Braxel from Fort Worth. Steve. Steve, hey. If I'm ever short a co-host and you ever want to hop on and help me co-host, let me know. I don't know if you want are interested in that, but I'm interested in that because I don't have Anthony today. I honestly feel like way more anxiety doing this, not knowing uh, Anthony's here. Mark showed up. What's up, Mark? Andante, uh, another uh, Andante from the place of soul and gospel. Is it Chicago? Is it Illinois? Andante? Alcoholic, what's up, dude? Sweden, Hilmodu. Someone's got to teach me how to say hello in Sweden. Brutally remastered. <laughs> Would love to see your uh, your master fader uh, treatment. Detroit, man. <sighs> Someone kicked me the f out of here. The one guy that's made such a contri contribution of getting me streaming live more regularly. Can't even remember where the heck he's from. Will you forgive me, brother? I hope so. So, Daniel, what's up, dude? Italy, rock on. Steve, coming in. Thank you. Rock on. There's two Steves here. Dude, either Steve. Either Steve. Because um, Algon, I can never say his, I don't even know what the heck his screen name means, so I don't know how I say it. Algon, oh no, Algon Scott. Shit. Dude, I'm, Anthony, where are you? All right, Scott or Steve, if either of you guys are interested in hopping in Discord in the future when I have no co-host just to help me with chat, I would love to have either of you because you're both awesome. John, thank you so much, man. Yeah, let's get this party started. Um, well, let's just get to it. Um, yeah, I uh, teach courses. They're paid courses. They're way more extreme than... Uh, any of my free YouTube tutorials, there's a link right there. The Sin Knight, which is Anthony. He's not with me today. Usually he saves the show. So if anything messes up and I'm too busy presenting something, I'll, I'll never know about it. And I guess you should just leave at that point. Um, Toontrack does have um, a nifty weekend deal for more of your classic and hard rock stuff. It's uh, Big Rock Drums, Classic Rock EBX, basic rock, easy bass MIDI, and uh, some easy mix stuff. I'm kind of like just browsing over easy mix stuff at this point, man. I just, I wish easy mix came out, easy mix three came out this year. I'm getting a little tired of um, adjusting my resolution just to use it. Um, I absolutely love TuneTrack though. So um, I'm trying not to knock them about it, but if you want me to keep using it, you got to give me something. And I know it's not fixing that's not going to come in an update. <laughs> You know, um, for any of you native instruments users, there is a free plugin, which is right here. And basically it's a, it's kind of like a crowd vocal choir. It's, I mean, you can just look at the image and imagine what this is. Um, Jacob, I don't want to mispronounce his last name. He basically gets audiences to sing certain vowels and stuff, and he samples it while he's out on tour, and he crammed it all together into a plugin. That's a free NI plugin. Um, it probably won't be free forever, so if you're into that stuff, do grab it. Easy Keys 2 um, had a great update. One of the to uh, counter me complaining about TuneTrack, one thing I love about TuneTrack, they typically don't add amazing features to their updates. That's what the next version of the software is for, but they do fix up bugs on a regular basis. And I can appreciate that. There were two in here that stood out to me. Bandmate and the Grooves tab now have an adjust for organ button function, which can make non-organ MIDI sound better with an organ. Now that's pretty cool. If uh, you're using the uh, soul organ, crap, I forget what that uh, EKX is called already. The most recent EKX, the uh, organ EKX. So it will make non-organ MIDI sound like it was meant more for organ. I didn't test it out yet. This is just Tune Tracks claim, but I love seeing this stuff. Uh, there was one more down here, right here. It's interesting this came out just the other day because we're actually diving into this today. When CC curves are edited, Easy Keys now avoids merging blocks if 
possible so that no ramp is created between the last node of a block and the first node of the falling block. Again, I didn't test that out. I just read that this morning. I was like, huh. And it's not even just a bug in Easy Keys. It's with um, all the version three software, maybe not um, superior, I'm not sure. But when you're working at the end of a MIDI block, and you do some editing right up to the end, it will auto merge the block to the block next to it and it gets annoying and you have to split it again. And anyway, a bunch of fixes. All right, easy keys too. Um, there's my YouTube channel. Make sure chat isn't popping off and we'll get started today. Yeah, we all want Superior Drummer 4 Braxel. I want Easy Mix 3 first though. Rocky, what's up, dude? You helped me keep this show running, Rocky. You know why. Thank you so much. Council, welcome back, dude. I like to see these rankings get bigger and bigger as the months go by, man. Um, if Glaze is here, CW Glaze is here, welcome and thank you for becoming a member. And everybody else seems to be a veteran. Thank you, Small Tubes. Appreciate it. Did I miss anyone? All right. I don't know if I would just want to fart around real quick or actually get into, um, kill the music. So I wanted to do a hybrid drum kit tutorial, but, and I thought about it on and off all month and it's, I don't know, I, maybe I'll do it at the end. Cause I think it's going to make people tune out and leave because it's just detail after detail. It's not, Hey, here's a button, click that, you know? So maybe I'll tack that towards the end and let me do the automation thing up front. But uh, you know what? Let's see how fast I can build a really quick generic song just so we can see um, what these weekend deals sound like. And you might be able to pick up a couple tips and tricks on how to demo just sounds and MIDI lightning fast. And we can hear big rock drums. I'm trying to, my short term memory, big rock drums, classic rock. Let's do that. Um, I have templates in my DAW. Maybe you should too, if you kind of have a generic starting place. This is my tune track template. It just launches uh, Easy Drummer, Easy Bass, and Easy Keys all at the same time. And that was classic rock on bass. And it was big rock drums on Easy Drummer. John, you might be into big rock drums if you haven't already, because definitely has a classic rock vibe. Uh, uh, speaking of John Lugwig, that's just an ignorant assumption off what little we know about each other. Um, so there's not MIDI grooves on sale. So let's just go to the, uh, big rock drums, MIDI. Let me grab, find one beat. I like, let's go for mid tempo verse. Check, 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 check. Seems like my mix should be sounding decent to you guys. I don't want to be picky, but if something is way off, do let me know. And hopefully I glance down to the chat. Braxel, <laughs> it's about time, dude. Not that I've ever pressured you, man. You've been asking about it forever. Uh, thank you so much for becoming a next level member. I appreciate it. Um, let's just say I like this beat. Let's dr drag it down to the song creator. And let me just pick one of these down here. And let's just pretend I like this already, even though I've never heard it before. This goes out to... Measure 125, I'll exclude the outro. Let me get a loop in Reaper. You can do this, you can do this. I forget the key command for zoom out. Nope, 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 nope. Shoot. Almost started the swear jar already. Where the heck is zoom out? Anyway, what was that? Measure 124, all right. Man, I'm having a total brain fart, but whatever. I've got about 10 programs that I use constantly that I have different key commands for. So it's, it's pretty easy for, all right. So the mouse wheel did zoom in and out. All right. Anyway, 1024 is right here is a full song loop. It's too bad while I'm dragging, I can't zoom out with my mouse wheel simultaneously, but so anyway, we're going to hear big rock drums only for a few minutes, just so we understand what it sounds like. We're gonna hear some MIDI, some sounds, and ooh, what do we got here? Yeah, let's do drums first. Let's 
wait for a beat to come in right here. Council, you already jumped the uh, jumped the gun. I assume you're happy with it. Holy resonating, sustaining kick drum in the low end. If you got some good monitors, you know what I'm talking about. Let's preview the mixer tab so we understand options as we plow through and I don't need the song creator up anymore. You know, this is an ignorant guess because I don't want to spend too much time on this. But when it comes to classic rock stuff, it's all about the room mics. Because that's what, and that's definitely what I think I'm hearing going through this, you know. Tom sounds are rarely the direct mic blasting you in the face. You get the direct mic, but it's usually the how much those direct mic, um, toms go to the ambient channels. That's that classic rock tone. And besides big rock drums, uh, classic rock, Easy X. It's sick, dude. It's sick. Yeah, that plate verb pops out in a good way to me the second it hits. I like that. Only so many Easy X's have a delay effect. This is one of them. Or a phase effect. I like this. I like that too. I would make it all a little less wet, but first impressions are pretty good. Mono lug wig. All right. Is that about it? Just about it. Wide lug wig. Yeah. It's roomy. All right. Cool. Um, let's just check out that easy bass thing. Um, let's see. The verse goes from measure five to 21. Let's see if I got my my S together yet, and if I can actually make a loop quickly yet. Yep, 25, yeah, here we go. Let's check out Easy Bass, and what MIDI pack was that? Do I have to go back and look? I think it was Basic Rock. Basic Rock, yep. So here's the MIDI. Um, I'll just keep it in uh, original key, and we just happen to be at 120. Let's see if there's a, a Here's a 110, 120. All right, all these songs will work right here. And we're not looping. Here we go. Let's check out uh, Appetite. It's definitely got some drive on this tone. This is DI pick. <laughs> this is a DI pick. I feel like it's growling. Yeah, <laughs> it's heavy, dude. That is heavy. Let's take a peek at this thing real quick. All right, so keep in mind that, oh yeah, yeah, this is actually on sale. This um, EBX product's actually on sale. And boy, does it have some balls right out of the gate. Okay. Finger articulation. Definitely way more polite, not in a good or a bad way, just my vocabulary. And we have two pick articulations. We have one that's over the bridge and one that's close to the neck, over the neck pickup, and you'll hear a different tone difference between the two. The bridge pickup gives uh, uh, less mids, less attack. I said bridge, I meant the opposite. Bridge is more attack, neck is less attack. Not a huge difference here. Let's find a preset real quick. Are we playing with the pick today? Yeah, sure. Oh boy. Ooh. A lot of bass in there. Chorusy. All right. interesting tone right there below the belt we can all right there's no guitar it's just bass and drums so let's pick a more present tone here's below the belt 
typical amp settings. Cool. We started, I think it was, I said measure five, bam, this measure five. And where do we go to 21? Let's drag another one out there, bam. Now we got a verse, let's start at 21. It's how fast you can bang out a song, and this isn't necessarily a song that you're gonna release, but this is an instant song where you can rehearse getting tones fast, auditioning MIDI fast, and just get better at your craft and learn the software. Yeah, learn the software, present the software to yourself. So when you sit down and you're in the hot seat and you're writing for you for real, possibly under a deadline or whether it's just passion or hobby, and you can actually move as fast as you wish. This is a great exercise right here. And I want to hear these on sale products. What was the other one? No, we're using them all. We're using, except for the Easy Mix, Big Rock, Easy X, Classic Rock, EBX, and we're now in the MIDI. So let's go from 21 to 29. Let's get that loop up going. 21, I almost hit it. All right, let's check out a uh, pre-course. And these pre-courses and verses don't necessarily go with the drums, but they could. Oh, whoops. And then easy bass, here we go, pre-course. Mm -hmm. Totally gives it a five. Uh, Pre-chorus usually has a bit of melody into it. I mean, there's no rules, but let's toss that sucker down there. One, two, three, four. That's to 29. And let's do one more. Let's do the chorus, which is... 16 measures from 29 to 45. Let's get our loop going up in the DAW. 29 to 45. All right, and if you're new to any of this, let me show you what I'm doing here. Copy, copy, yep, yeah, sure. If you're new to this, and you're like, dang, he's working so fast. He's not saying how he can do it. Well, a lot of people here are veterans at this point. So check out my audition trick video. And that'll get you up and running as fast as I'm working right now. Get back to Reaper. Chorus. See some groovy stuff going on there. So I get a verse, pre chorus, and chorus right there um, with drums, which I didn't even audition, but you know, the algorithm of the song creator from Easy Drummer, just type in song creator on my uh, channel. Do, 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 do. Song create. I got a whole playlist, but playlists aren't coming up. Uh, well, this is video one of three, good. So I used the song creator to get an instant drum track and it did good enough. We're up and running, uh, nothing's turning me off. It's not exactly mine, but it's a template to work on. Here's the song creator if you wanna learn more about that. And then I did the audition trick for Easy Bass. And I mean, we got a demo. I can turn around and ask my guitarist or ask my vocalist, hey, does any of this work? And if any of that works, then bam, you at least got a song section and start working off that, you know? Um, real quick, let us let me just go find a beat I like real quick out of Big Rock. Super cool um, ghost notes and drags on the snare. I don't want anything that wild though, because I want to pick a beat so I can audition MIDI real quick. We can check out that MIDI pack and then we'll keep moving. Let's just do something generic like that. Um, where do I want to put this sucker? 
We were just working on the chorus. Just ignore its song structure for right now. I just want to hear this verse. And then we can check out that easy bass MIDI for a minute. So we heard Appetite song. Let's hear Let's Make a Deal. It's a very happy MIDI pack so far. <laughs> it's the best way I could describe it. Try pre-chorus. We're actually playing at the right tempo too, so it's how it's meant to sound. Check out Stop My Heart. Luck of the draw, let's try Luck of the Draw and then we'll call it. I mean, a lot of this just sounds familiar like stuff I've been growing up to, you know, my whole life, decades ago. So this might be, you might feel the same way. This might be right up your alley. I actually didn't buy it for this stream. I just already had it. Just walking around. Up the fretboard too. Cute. Oh, those first few notes. When and a when and it's a. They had to change the the next notes coming to avoid some copyright. It's a fun lick right there, actually. All right, let's kill this. Close this. Let me open up a fresh one, go to my templates, tune track session. Make sure I didn't miss anything awesome before I move along. I've got a, uh, I've got a fake easy guitar uh, solution until tune track actually goes in that direction if the world even exists anymore in a year or two. <laughs> um, we get, actually, we're going to kind of cover it a little bit today. All right, now I'm going to work hard on Easy Kazoo. Yeah, yeah, Easy Bagpipes would be a good one. And uh, I was just looking uh, for Scott. Excellent. Awesome. Thank you, Scott, and thank you, Steve. I'm going to reach out to you guys. Steve, have we ever communicated via email? Because... Uh, Scott and I have, so I know how to reach out to him. If we have an email before, uh, shoot me an email, please. All right, let's go into automation, but I want to do kind of a, a fun thing. Uh, you guys should see what I can do with guitar programs on this. I'm going to do this in the near future and, and pitch the easy guitar thing. But um, for now, I'm just going to kind of do uh, a fun little bass line. I'm going to introduce you guys to a program called Riffer. It's by Audio Modern. And this is the only software company I actually, uh, months ago, I've reached out and said, hey, can I be an affiliate? And they said, oh, yeah, sure. Here's your affiliate link. So um, they didn't reach out to me. Um, I reached out to them because I love it. I, I've been using Riffer for maybe three or so years. I don't know how long, a long time. I think, I feel like I saw a screenshot where it's packaged in with the current version of Pro Tools. So you might already have it for, for, for free. And what this thing is, it's an inspiration plugin. That's what I like to call it. Um, it might be, it's for pre-production, for writing, and it should inspire you. Uh, sometimes it shoots out stuff that's final product, and you just grab it and steal it, and it wrote your song for you too. It's fantastic, and it's inexpensive. It's probably around 50 bucks or something like that. And um, I have an old Easy Keys 2 video, excuse me, I have an old video of me predicting easy keys of me trying to predict what's coming up in easy keys Two before it was released. I shouldn't bother looking for it. And the only, and I didn't have really big standards, but what I wanted was some sort of arpeggiator automatic, uh, arpeggiator and easy keys. And we do not have that. We have, we have an arpeggio MIDI folder, so we can grab some arpeggios, drag them down, but it's nothing that's auto-generated for you. There's no real thinking behind it. So that's missing. And then 
in comes me still wanting to use Riffer because Easy Keys did not provide that. Because when I used Easy Keys 1, which was really a very limiting product, an older product, I was using Riffer all the time and it could get me fast melodies and bass lines quick. Um, you kind of want to set your standards somewhere neutral in the middle though, because this thing is not AI. Who the heck knows what AI is really going to do for us in production until, you know, more months or years go by. These are just algorithms, and some of them work really well. Um, there's two ways to add Riffer. One way is to put it before, let me see if, uh, window plus, yep, yeah, that did it, good. All right, there's two ways to add Riffer. We're doing the quick and dirty way right now, which actually crashes my computer now and then, but you can just get up running fast, because I'll have just a bunch of Riffer instances up and just be doing some crazy stuff and it crashed my computer, but an instance or two, it's no problem. I'll just add Riffer on the channel, on the virtual instrument I want to control, and then I'll drag Riffer before it because Riffer has the MIDI instructions and it will send the MIDI instructions to the virtual instrument placed after it. So right now, Riffer is going to control easy bass. And there's a limitation to that. If I had a, um, uh, a MIDI controller plugged into control easy bass. Once I put Riffer before easy bass, that'll knock my MIDI controller out. So I can't control it anymore. But this is the fast, quick and dirty way to use Riffer. Normally you start a new channel and you put Riffer on that new channel all on its own. And then you route MIDI with your DAW and that's for future stuff. But anyway, here's Riffer on easy bass. What the heck can it do? Let's see. I'm feeling, um, I, I'm trying to do a softball right over the plate for myself because I'm live and I've never talked about this before. So I'm going to do more electronic bass just for this. But um, with some effort, you know, you can get Riffer to find you some fantastic bass fills, whether it's blues, whether it's progressive. I mean, it's, it's hilarious. And you'll see me kind of getting into it more in the future. Oh, it's my website. Here we go. Like I was telling you, this is my first and only affiliate that I chose. And if you're interested in Riffer, um, do click on this link if you want to check it out, because then they'll know that I sent you. And it's not a money maker, people. It's just you trying to keep this hustle going, man. I've got the uh, 80s Easy Bass loaded up, except it's the electronic keyboard, which is pretty darn cool. So and I think Euro is fun. That's fun. Euro Crush. Yeah, let's do that. Now let's crank open Riffer. We're, we're actually going to talk about automation in a minute, but I just want to get a bass line up and I wanted to show you guys Riffer. So I'm working with bass, so I don't want to be so high up the keyboard. This is octave C3 to C4. Let's go down to C1. It's probably more of a bass register. Here's C1. I'll hit the randomize button. And I want to get rid of this feature called de density real quick. There we go. Uh, let's just see what happened. I clicked on two buttons. <laughs> uh, I don't want to work that fast right now. I want to work this fast. I want to tap tempo this. Three, four, one, two, three, four, 90. Let's do 90. Finally released a VST version. Well, I've been using it for years. I, I don't know if you mean a, um, a uh, iOS tablet version, or maybe that version was first. But um, it's, I've been using this for a couple of years. Uh, Rafita Pepita. <laughs> I remember reading your name. Uh, hopefully I said Rafita, right? Rafita, Rafita. Riff is really fun. Anyway, I slowed the tempo down. Sounds pretty staccato. Let me turn on sustain notes. There we go. I feel like this is a little loud. I don't want to blow you guys out of the water. So, one E into two. So these are just rolling 16 notes. That's a pretty busy bass line. Um, let me put less notes, 16 notes. 
in a measure. Let me just put 13, even though it's not an even number. Hit the dice again. Now we have 13 notes, and now I've turned on sustained notes. It should be a little more phrasy now. <sighs> this thing's fun, man. This thing's super fun. And then let's get back to the lesson. Let me just do one thing to tighten this up. I actually want to start this riff on a root note and I wanna make sure it stays a root note, so I'll lock that note in. So every time the downbeat, the one of the measure comes around, I wanna be hitting that low C. We're working in C minor right now. Riffer can work in an insane amount of modes in keys, so. It's pretty fun. You just hit the dice button. Now if I hit the dice button, a different pattern emerges that has sustaining notes. It'll keep this root note on the downbeat there, and it'll just keep giving me ideas. <laughs> that sounds pretty cool. Imagine that on, you know what? This on an analog basis sound cool. Uh, <laughs> don't crash my computer. <laughs> that's badass. All right, that's badass. I'm going to stay with electronic just so everything's smooth for me, okay? What do I want to do? Uh, you're a crush. You might be thinking of a different one because I can vouch a minimum of two years. Uh, uh, Rafita, I can vouch a minimum of two years. I've probably been using it for four. I'm not sure. It's two to four years I've been using it. So, but, um, if you're the type of person who likes to compose on an iPad and all that, uh, Riffer has an iOS uh, plugin as well. Um, most of the features are exactly the same, just a limitation or two with syncing tempo and stuff like that. This is a, all right, uh, easy drummer. What time we got? It's 1.30, all right. It's, it's only been a half hour and I've got anxiety today, guys. Uh, you know, Anthony's not here. The things I want to talk about today are not things that I've done scripted videos about. So it's off the top of my head. I'm a little worried about getting too confusing. I'm just trying to go slow and not overcomplicate automation and riffer and all that stuff. But um, we just get a quick beat going. Um, actually, to get back to pre you know me preaching off the Apple box about workflow, let me get a beat down first and then decide what tones I like so I'm saving a ton of time. Um, Synthwave actually has two kicks and two snares, so I want to use both kicks in this, in the beat. So on beat one, we're doing a backbeat beast, back beat based beat. You guys know what I'm talking about now, right? I hope so. I want to use one of each kick and one of each snare so I can audition the two different kicks and two different snares in one beat. This saves me a lot of time. We've got two options of hi-hats. There's one and there's two, and I'm going to loop this, and I'm just going to stay inside it easy while I find a preset. I'll hit stop a second time. Hit play, and now we're not in Reaper. We're only looping in easy. And I can hear those two different kick drums because I have two different options, the two different snares, the two different hi-hats. I can make a, a much faster decision on what sounds from what library preset I want. I have a MIDI controller to control volume, but since Anthony's not here, my iPad with chat is laying part of it. John Riffer is not a part of Easy Keys. Crap, did I post that? Did I put it in chat? Did I put Riffer? I did. Let me say it better in chat. Riffer is here. And let me give you a different link for your future reference because I have a page on my site about it which I will put all my training videos about it. Anyone, any of my members that are worried I'm gonna to spend too much time on Riffer, don't. The program's not big enough to sidetrack me, but I like it so much and I think it will, I think it will, um, I was gone to 30 minutes. What's that me, John? Oh, I got you, you just came back. Welcome back, John. But um, I'm not gonna to get too sidetracked with Ripper. It's an, Riffer, it's an amazing tool for easy bass, for easy keys and easy drummer. But it's such a small program, I won't get lost for too long. Back to the show. Just 
just find a quick library preset to work with. It's a great way to find tones fast. Let's get a backbeat out there. Try my love. No. It's been so long since I reviewed this, I forget which one I'm into. I want more sustain than that. I should have been listening, but I was talking and listening and... <sighs> Come on, hurry up. Maybe I'll stay with all night. Yeah, let me just do all night. I like that hi-hat. All right, now let me get a backbeat I actually wanna hear now that I got my tone. I like the first kick, so I'll use the first kick. This one has less decay, this one has more decay. So maybe we could use the one with less decay in the verse, more decay in the chorus to open up the chorus a little, something like that. Hi-hat. I like the first one better. So, whoops, eighth notes. It's kind of fun. Add a little extra hi-hat for the turnaround. Let's duplicate this. I'd go slower if I was teaching what I'm doing right now, but I'm not. I'm just trying to get a song laid out. That's four measures. Let's do eight measures. Let's merge it. Well, get the loop off. Velocity, pick up, oh good. This seems like a good loop to me. Yep, let me duplicate that instead. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's eight measure verse, select it all, right click, merge it, bam. Let me copy this over here and let's do a chorus beat real quick and I'll just use the verse I just made as a template and just add something to it. One thing I liked was that other snare because it had a longer sustain saw so with the correct MIDI block selected, which is really important to do this fast trick. I'll select this one that I want to be the chorus. Let me call it the chorus already so you guys understand this is different. And I want to select the snare lane it only selects all the snares of my highlighted MIDI block. Just bump this up to here. Bam, now we got that thing. Um, and let's do four on the floor instead. I hope all you guys that have been following me with my grid editor teaching, you know what the heck four on the floor is. And that's too much editing. It's not really, but here's how I should, should have done it. Here's a four measure loop. Let's do a four measure loop and then we'll just duplicate it when we're done. Cuts our work almost in half. Leap. And I'm gonna play from easy, so I'll loop this course I'm working on. Put my cursor where I want it in easy and I'll hold shift before I hit spacebar and exclude my DAW from playback so I can only loop this. Doom, doom. Let's do that. Oops, undo this guy. <laughs> 80s Tom, 80s electric Toms, man. <laughs> Where were they? Uh, there we go. Remove that hi hat. Doom, doom. And I'll go do, do, do at the end. So, um, do, 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 do like that. All right. Let's see if this beat works for me. Shift space bar so I can only audition this. Not be stuck to Reaper's loop. Four on the floor. <laughs> Tops. 
little kick roll at the end. All right, that works. I want this eight measures long. Got the point tool selected, control copy. Ah, is that option on Mac? I started writing, I started writing my Mac key commands down, so I stopped guessing at you guys. Yep, that's option on Mac just to click and drag this so you can duplicate it. I'll select them both, right click and merge. And now I have a quick song structure and let me just loop this out like this. Now I'm going from measure one to 33. Let's get that loop in our DAW and now we can start playing around. Cute, nifty. Enable loop. So when I hit play, even though Easy Bass has no MIDI in it, and there's no MIDI in the Easy Bass lane or track in Reaper, we hear Easy Bass playing because Riffer was placed before it, which is a quick and dirty way to throw Riffer down. So if you went out and bought Riffer right now and you just place it before your tune track instance, it'll just start working. It's definitely a better way to do it, but that's a fast way just to go, go, go. Especially you just want a couple ideas before you start production. Great way to get Riffer in front of you. So when I hit play, Easy Bass is taking commands from Riffer. And we're hearing the Easy Drummer beats that I programmed by hand just real quick. We're going verse, chorus, verse, chorus, eight measures each, 33 measure loop. Oh no. won't be able to get out of this. If I wasn't live, I'd wait it out. Bummer. Bye-bye. So one thing about Riffer is when I place it before instances, it does make Reaper a little unstable. Even though it said Riffer didn't crash, it's all the commands it's sending. And that definitely doesn't happen all the time, but it's the world we live in, so. And I don't think, oh, I didn't save my project to begin with, so I don't think there was an easy save or whatever, so ah, it's a bummer. Anyway, that's Riffer. It is sick, but I don't really feel like I was uh, pushing it too hard, and it gave it a crash, and I'm not sure who to point the finger at. But uh, I rarely crash with monstrous sessions. Uh, usually I put up a ton of Riffer instances before I get trouble, but I don't know. Anyway, so how do I get back up fast? I mean, I just, I'm not going to recreate everything I did just to show you automation, but I do have to get something up to automate, you know? <laughs> oh man, what a bummer. Um, well, if you know your SHIT, you should be able to recover pretty fast from something like this. What was I using before? Uh, Synthwave. Let's see how fast Sean can catch up to himself. Especially if I don't have to talk about it. Oh, I forgot what when I select. Oh, I stayed on all night. Cool. This is, uh, um, That's done. It's kind of like, uh, if you want to see Shooty working under pressure, here it is right here, man. Not really worried about it. It's just, I guess it's kind of fun to display me getting out of this and back into it, but, but I have a extra snare. Yeah, I changed the snare. I did four on the floor. I'm going to exclude the toms just to keep us moving, but here we go. Merge. Oh, there's one other thing I want to tell you about Riffer too, which kind of makes it like, holy crap, I need this thing right now. Because, all right, anyway, so there's my drums back. And then I was in easy bass. So I have, uh, yeah, that, that. 
this one other thing I wanted to tell you about Riffer. So here I go, taking a chance. Oh, let me save my project. <laughs> so if I put Riffer before Easy Base, here's the cool thing about it is what was I start at C1. C1, randomize, and I got rid of density. It's weird. My memory sucks so bad, except for the things I do all the time. I can whip through stuff like this, right? Let's lock that there. We're in C minor. And what did I do? Like 13 notes. Delete 13 notes. And I uh, locked my root note. Bam. Here we go. <laughs> That's so cool. Dude, that riff sounds cool right there. I don't I don't know if maybe I should keep it. Let's hear that at 90. Now we need the sustain, so I'll turn on sustain. Oh man. Alright, so the one note I wanted to tell you about Riffer, I'll save this so I have a place to start back from. One cool note I have about Riffer is it's just gonna sit there and do random crazy stuff. And sometimes it's good, sometimes it's not. And um, I could say, hey, you know, um, every, well, why that, here we go, every two measures change your pattern. So watch this. It's one measure. Now it's going to change every two measures. It's pretty fantastic. And then as you listen, 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 and you hear something you like, take the randomizer off so it doesn't go away. And then you export the MIDI and you can just build a whole MIDI collection with Riffer. I mean, hit the pencil thing and then do I want to save presets, a conversation for another day, but look, save as MIDI file. And I can export what's right here, right out to my desktop and create a whole MIDI collection just from Riffer. And then I could just have a collection of ideas for a different, different project and just deal them into easy bass or easy keys like I'm dealing cards at a... Uh, poker table you know so that's the that was the last thing i wanted to say about riffer it's money dude it's pretty cool that sounds pretty cool man anyway it's getting automation the reason why we're here it's 47 we're 47 minutes in we got this i wonder if anyone told me but i wasn't on the right screen luckily i am now You know what? Let's make Riffer change eight, every eight measures. Since all of our song sections are eight measures long, we won't get so bored of the same bass line. It's a pretty cool feature. Uh, sample rate is usually 48K because I typically do video. Uh, does it say it up here? 48. 24 is where I'm at. This should change. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Oh, I don't have a loop set up. We're going out to measure 33. Let's do that so we don't interrupt the workflow. Now I know my key commands all of a sudden. All right, so I want a quieter sound in the first verse, not a quiet, a more tame sound. So I've supposedly already programmed all this and I'm in love with it, which is not a fact. I'm just dishing stuff out, right? Let's pretend this is the song I want and I love it. And now I want to produce the sounds a little bit. I want to automate in my tune track products. Disclaimer up front for anyone who complains is when we assign CC values to effects in your tune track software, you can choose not to automate those effects in your tune track software, and you can just have your DAWs automation grab a hold of those effects. So you could edit, do what I do and what I do today right now in tune track and with automation. You can just do it in your DAW instead if that's where you're more comfortable. But uh, teaching it out of Easy is cool because it kind of shows what Easy can do, or any tune track product can do. And it's universal because we're all using different DAWs. So here's just a way to not be DAW case sensitive. But I actually don't know how to program uh, automation in Reaper yet. I'm too much of a newbie. But if I was in Pro Tools on my track, 
I would say, don't show me waveforms anymore. Show me automation lanes. That would open up and I would say, oh, there's the CC value I want to automate. And I could automate what I'm about to do in TuneTrack. I could do it on my DAW instead. It's either or, whatever you're comfortable with. Regardless, there's steps you have to do in TuneTrack to get it to go anyway. So let's make our verse come out a little bit more calm. So let me look at the mixer tab. We have transients. I'm looking at effects down here in this module right here. We have transient, tape saturation, high pass, low filter. When it comes to electronic stuff, that's super important. And we have compression. So we have a way with all these knobs that we can really tame this speed or make it a little more muffled, make it tone it down, and then make it jump out for the chorus. All with automation, not with dynamics, not with mixing. You could do it there too, but it's just, we're going to do it with effects. And remember, you could have easy keys open and you could be dialing down room mics for a part that you want to be more articulate. And you could be dialing up the room mics for a part that you want more bigger and boomier. You know, there's reasons to do this in easy bass, easy keys, or easy drummer. We're an easy drummer at the moment. We can do it in all of them. Why not? So let me just play with these for a sec and decide what tames this a little. All right, let's do the most generic and obvious move that is surefire to work. Am I fast, John? <laughs> you got it, Council. No, Riffer is really cool, man. It's it's not like uh, it's not the main weapon I reach for if emergency came up. Uh, not to use like guns as a reference, I just do metaphors, but it's, it would be the something I would grab to show my buddies or bring to the target range or something like that, because it really complements things, but it can't be the leader and do everything for you. It's just a tool in the bag, you know? So Riffer is super cool. Uh, do check, do click on the link that uh, I presented to you guys. If you want to check it out, I would appreciate that. Here it is in the chat one more time. Gonna save where I am in case I crash again. That, you know, maybe that wasn't even Riffer, but like I said, when I get like seven instances of Riffer on, on seven different virtual instruments and it's doing all this random crap in real time, uh, I do get a crash. But if you know your computer's capability, you know, in the freeze tracks and, and um, print tracks, you know. All right, let's do a high pass, fil uh, low pass filter. Low pass, a better version of a better way to name low pass is to say high cut. We're going to cut the high frequencies out and let the low frequencies pass. That's what a low pass filter means, and low means bass frequencies. So when this is turned all the way up, nothing happens. We're just letting everything through. But as we crank this down, So let's kick it off with that. Now I'm going to right click on my low pass. Check this out. I'm trying to get better at my real time zooming. I usually only zoom in and out of my scripted videos, but trying to get the key commands down so I can do it live as well. Find the knob or fader or button or, or slider, anything. It's great. Uh, easy drummer, uh, has a ton of CC values that can be learned to your hardware which I do here. You guys see me reach off screen and you hear things change. So I do that with hardware. I have a hardware mixer down here that controls Reaper and TuneTrack. But cooler than that, you can just right click on something and assign it a CC value. Here you see bind the CC and I'll just click on one that's available, 57. And now I can go over to the grid editor and automate CC 57, which represents that low pass. Very fun. Grid editor. Right now we're looking at the velocity lane. This is the MIDI values editor. And when you expand it, velocity is most important. That's why it's right in your face. But if you select this, look, CC 57. Am I getting good at this zoom thing? Yeah. CC 57, low pass. We want the checkbox to be next to that so we can control that. Here we go. Awesome. Now, I'll tell you right now, this is not an exact science. You kind of got to use your eyeballs a little bit, but 
Notice when I select the grid editor, there's an orange rectangle highlight around the grid editor. That means the tools up here are the ones we want to use, not the ones down here. I'm going to select the pen tool to write, and I want the low pass filter to be closer to off so the drums are muffled. And then as we break into that chorus, it lifts and the whole brightness of the drum kit comes. So I don't know, what do I want to do? Let me expand this lane so it's less sensitive. You know, if we start drawing in marks when the lane's only this big, we're going to be making really large value jumps. Let me open this up. Let me start in the middle. Let me just hear what this sounds like. That's pretty muffled. And that's kind of the idea I was going for. Um, if you take your resolution down, I believe... Yeah, we can have cleaner increments. So undo that. Let me start it up here. I want it a little less muffled. And oh, this intro is eight measures long. <laughs> Let's do it again. Three. All right, let's do this. I'll right click. The, these dots are called nodes. So I'll switch to my arrow tool. And since I don't want to travel all the way up there to select it, I know that my grid editor is highlighted due to the orange outline and key commands will work. So if I select one on my keyboard, it will select this arrow. Three, two, one, one. I'll just select the note I don't want, hit delete, or I could right click and hit delete. Now let's hear this. I'm gonna play back from easy to not lose so much time. Let's hear it play back from three to six and hear that knob turn. This knob right here. Let's hear what that sounds like with the actual playback. I'm zoomed in. Uh, playback from five. And now we're just listening to the drums. We're just looking for proof that what I did was a, you know, is working. Not, not exactly trying to approve it or disapprove. I'm just demonstrating a technique, whether it sounds good or not. I mean, we could talk all day about whether it sounds good or not. What I want to do is this. So I'm too impatient to wait eight measures with that move and I want to break right into the course. So now let's hear it from the top. And a symbol on the one would actually uh, bring this idea home. Ugh. I don't really like digital drum kit symbols. Um, I'm going to put one just for the sake of accenting a downbeat and letting the listener know that we just changed sections. And now that I did that, I feel like changing the riffer lick. I want it to change every four beats instead of eight. Let's hear from the top. Not only will we hear um, that low pass filter ramp upwards, going away, making the sound brighter, we'll also hear a downbeat, which lets us know we change song structure into the chorus. And Riffer will also change its riff. So it's like everyone's kind of on the same page now. Let's, I have no clue what it's going to sound like. Is the ramp. Oh, no, I did mess up. Um. Remember that, remember at the beginning, if you were here, remember at the beginning of the stream, I was talking about how it's annoying that when you work at the end of a MIDI block, but up against the next MIDI block, and if you make an adjustment right there, sometimes they merge together. There it is, it already happened. This should be a chorus block, but it merged. Let me see what's up with uh, me scooting that stuff. Hmm, that's a good lesson to learn. You might want to be more committed to your song structure before you automate because that this automation isn't written in like the song track. It's written in, I don't want to quote that out loud. I at least know how to fix it. One more time.
new bass riff from Riffer. All right, so that's working. When these MIDI blocks break up on you like it just did to me, you can cut them back apart. It's just a bug that they haven't addressed yet. Uh, there's nothing I can do about it besides if I needed to... Oh, nothing actually breaks, but if you want it to visually look like it did before this, these blocks auto-merge, you got to cut them up and recolor them. It's just nature of the beast. So let's try... Let's do an easy bass automation. I'm going to save just in case I crash. All right, so when you use the 80s keyboard in Easy Bass, which is a really cute feature, and this was the total hint that Easy Keys 2 was coming soon, you know, um, about a year ago or something like that, when this product came out. These oscillator knobs, if you're not familiar with how synthesizers work, and I'm just an amateur, I know enough to, to BS about it, which I'm doing right now. These oscillator knobs, they basically add different octaves and stuff. So when you start turning these down, this sound changes. Check it out. It actually all go away completely. That's pretty cool. So oscillator one's really contributing uh, the sustaining part of the tone. Let's hear this. All right, there's some, something is up today, guys. At least I just saved it. Uh, any veterans of my stream will know this isn't exactly normal. But uh, luckily I saved it so we can get right back to where we're going. In digitare. In digitare. Oh, hopefully I said that right. Hey, welcome to the stream. I don't recognize your username and thank you. I'm glad it's inspiring for you today. Cody Drummer X, can you use a V8 sound card for audio interface or do you need an actual Scarlett V8 sound card? If I knew what that was, um, I would comment, but that does not sound like an audio interface and I never recommend anything besides an audio interface unless you just simply have no other options. Uh, it says you're a, a said Cody Easy Drummer X. If you're a V drummer, I just, I wouldn't even mess around. If you're doing mission critical live drumming. I wouldn't even mess around. You get an audio interface. But I understand that's tough, but dude, there's some cheap ones out there. You spend less than 200 bucks and get a killer one. You could spend 99 bucks and get one that will do the job, you know, or you can be like me. Uh, I'm using um, RME Fireface, which that was a big investment years ago, but I mean, that was like two and a half grand or three grand, but that's for everything I do in my entire audio career, not just e-drumming or this and that. So that thing's totally owning the stream. I mean, here's what the brain of my audio interface looks like. This is a serious amount of signal flow going from one computer to the other. I, I divide. Anyway, I recommend getting a sound card. That's not because, a, excuse me, an audio interface. That's not because sound cards don't work. It's just because everyone who goes a sound card route and then gets better at what they do, they go, oh crap, I never noticed this wasn't really working in the first place and they end up upgrading. Um, I do have uh, a video just on that. I think it's your first time here. I don't recognize your name. Welcome to the stream, by the way. Um, let me see uh, audio uh, interface. Yeah. Um, if you haven't watched this video yet, check this one out. It might be stuff you already know, but whoops, that's Riffer. This might be stuff you already know, but um, if there's any information you're missing in this conversation, this might fill in those little gaps. So it might be worth a watch. There you go right there. All right, let me get back to it. Oh yeah. I want to automate. <laughs> Sounds funny. All right. I'm going to take oscillator two. I'll right click, go to bind to CC. I'm going to 
bind uh, this second oscillator to CC8. I'm going to bind this oscillator to CC9, so they're right next to each other. I go over to the grid editor, and under the MIDI values editor, like I said, we see value is uh, velocity is default because it's always what we want. But if you look under, now we see oscillator controls, and we're going to automate those. Uh, do, 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 do. Time we got. You got 25 minutes. I'm not going to do the hybrid kit today. And I'm definitely nervous that I'm not going to get through talking about the hybrid kit due to the details. I need to rehearse that in my head a few times. So I'm just going to stay on this today, guys. I assume it's not like anyone's expecting it. It's not like anyone really reads my promotions. <laughs> I was really hoping for the hybrid kit. It's a cool thing. Um, so I got oscillator two, and I want that mute until that chorus kicks in. And then I want it to come to life and kick in. So let me grab the pen tool and it, everything kicks in at five. So I want this all the way, not all the way up, almost all the way up at five and we'll just have it. Yeah, something like this. It could have been a cleaner way to make this line, but I'm just kind of in a hurry. Yeah, bring it. let me just do it right now. There we go. I want to do this same thing to the oscillator three knob. I want them to work together. So I'll select all these nodes. I'll copy. I haven't done this in a while. Hope I don't mess it up. Paste, please work. Nope. Right click paste, please work. <laughs> Close. Where's my, oh, my CTI should be right here. Uh, current time indicator, the cursor. I used to like using proper terminology and then everyone in the world started using DAWs and they started saying, this is not a CTI, this is a cursor. So uh, that's where CTI came from. Now let's see if something happened. Again, I'm just going at lightning fast. I don't even know what the sounds like. No need to judge uh, whether you like it or not. The automation is working. Look, my knobs are zeroed out at the beginning of the song, I think, I hope. And they should go up for that course. Let's find out. They turned up, there's not enough to really make a difference. So watch this, great way to edit nodes is now I have my arrow tool still selected, which I could have just hit one on my keyboard. And I'm gonna grab all the nodes. I want these buttons off. So I just highlighted the buttons before the ramp. And eh, maybe I'll do these three. Now they're down and switch over to oscillator two and make the same move. Yeah, we'll hear a difference now. These knobs are off now. You'll see them bump up for the chorus. It's pretty cool. So, do I have, is my loop up? Let's check. This loops out to 29. Turn this down a little bit. Now, Riffer's literally just gonna do its job and keep changing the bass line for me, which is pretty cool. And uh, I can hop over to chat from, I actually need to cough pretty bad. I'm at the end of the sickness. Guys, um, this is a quick break. I was sick with like a uh, fever and cough and all that like three weeks ago. I've been feeling good for a couple weeks, but my lungs are finally like, hey, we're, we've waited a month to clean up and now I'm coughing stuff up. So that's what's going on. Um, I did read a couple chat messages while I was getting my breath back. I'm not one to uh, give it 
there it is. And something's wrong today. Um, at least we did the automation tutorial. Oh, uh, throw questions into the chat right away. Um, you know, simple, small questions, and we'll go over them right now. Because we completed automation. I wanted to sh finally show you guys Riffer. I'm actually going to do some videos only on Riffer to show you how to take it further. And uh, yeah, I had a crashy, crashy day. It's the uh, first time ever in almost two years of streaming. So what can I do? But um, people are asking me about, someone asked about an interface. Someone else is using RME. Well, uh, RME UFX3. Have you used or heard the, no, I have not used the Pharaoh Fish Pulse 16. I'm not the type of guy to push expensive recommendations because if you say, oh, this $2,000 piece of gear sounds much better, which means it only sounds 2% better, but you actually have the ears to hear that. And then someone with less experience buys it. I don't want them to waste two grand due to what my ears hear. Oh, that was from Braxel too, by the way. Damn, you you have an RME, dude? Ugh, I wouldn't even leave the RME. That is if you want the... Um, neutral converters, right? That's RME is known not to color things like, um, like the Apollo, for example, like people really like like the more air frequencies that are artificially added. And I get, totally get that. So depends on what's going on. I do it as, all right, there are some comments. Do, 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 do. <laughs> Dude, people who speak two languages, man, uh, salute you. Ronaldo, thank you for being a member, by the way. I appreciate that. I want to do, because I know Superior Drama Force is coming sooner or later, so I don't want to steer in the direction of Superior Drama 3 since all those videos will be instantly outdated the moment Superior Drama 4 comes out. You can see why that's a waste of time for me. But I've been heavily considering doing just a songwriter course not about mixing, not about e-drumming, but just about building songs out with it. So that is on my to-do list. So, you know, so, and um, with that hybrid drum kit lesson I was going to do today, maybe I'll do it next month. I was going to bring up Superior for a moment, just from a blending point of view. So uh, it has nothing to do with interest. It just has to do with strategy because Shooty School doesn't really make a profit. <laughs> and so I got to choose my time wisely. Oh, uh, you need more in and outs. I gotcha. Um, mine has, I think mine's 16 in. No, mine, uh, my, my fire face, RME fire face is eight in, and I got, uh, light pipes to add more from other stuff. So I, dude, keep the RME and just get a cheaper interface and light pipe it in through the optical cable. If all you need is more inputs, that is if the inputs don't need to be name brand, because if the name brand, holy S H I T with thousands of dollars afterwards, you know, if you grab like a focus, right? Octopri just to get another eight inputs, you can light pipe it in and you don't, you can still be using your RME gear, you know? Uh, just an idea. Um, that's how I do it. I, I rarely have to go have to go over eight inputs on my interface unless I have to leave my home studio for a gig. Maybe I'm going to go work a convention or something like that. And now I need 16 mics, which <laughs> shoot me in the head, please. Then I would grab a cheaper Octopri and just light pipe it into my RME. So that's how I would get in extra uh, inputs. Appreciate you guys showing up today. What do I want to do before I go? Because time is limited. I mean, I'm only on for 15 more minutes. I don't know if doing an early stream, I've never done it before. So I don't know if that's a good idea, do an early stream. <laughs> All right. All right. I got something fun for you guys. Oh, I got something super fun for you guys. Can I do it in a few minutes? Uh, hopefully I don't crash Reaper again. Scott. And Steve, I, I hope you guys are still there. Did S Scott comment in? Oh, Steve's still here. Oh, both of you guys are still here. 
All right, check this out. I'm gonna go after this demo unless anyone has some real short questions. Let me see here, let me put, what do I need? I need easy keys, no. Let's just use a drummer. Yeah, uh, here's a sneak preview of some of the videos I'm going to put out in the near future. No one's ever going to see it except for the people that are here live now because I see my analytics of my streams. Only the live people watch the end. No one will see this. So don't give this away. And if you do, <laughs> tell them who showed you, okay? It's kind of why I've been kind of wanting to wait. Uh, let me just have Easy Drummer. Let me just get like a thrash beat, like get it, get it, get it, with the snare starting on the downbeat. What's a fun metal kit? Uh, chat, what's your favorite metal kit? And let me choose, let me just use tap to find real quick. 16th notes. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. There we go. Cool. Turn off my background music. All right, hopefully the delay isn't too long where someone actually told me what metal kit they like. Uh, Easy Keys, Braxel, Easy Keys 2 came out uh, about one year ago. And my stream delay is too long to take any feedback, so let me just choose a metal kit I like. Death Metal sounds great. It's quiet, it's a little scooped, but the ambience and the verb on it, I love it. Let me bring up Death Metal. Unless someone already answered. Do, 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 do. Nope. Yeah, it's sick. Let me just loop this. All right, check this out, guys. Um, adding a new instrument track in my DAW. The software I'm launching right now, well, I'm gonna launch um, Contact, which if you don't know what Contact is, then you just, you're not doing a lot of virtual instrument stuff because it's a big, uh, contact by Native Instruments, just a big heavy hitting company that's been around for a while. But you can buy a third party program that works with it. It's a guitar program. I don't want to screen any questions about this program because I don't use it for production. I only use it for writing and getting ideas out. And then I, and then I learn the ideas on my own instrument and then I don't use the program anymore. But this is a fantastic program. Here it is, Shreddage 3. I bet a lot of you already know what Shreddage 3 is. And I don't even know what to, let's try this. Let's try Modern Metal 2. I probably should have loaded um, Complete Control instead because I don't recognize this player and I usually work in Complete Control. Similar to Easy Keys 2, I don't think uh, Native has updated the older plugin interfaces to work on bigger resolutions. It's a... It's a tough, uh, I guess it's a tough thing for the bigger companies to keep up with. But uh, anyway, hopefully this is a decent guitar tone. How do I get that harmonica out of there? I'm reading this little text out here so you can see what I'm doing. I'm reading the tool tips. Uh, this preset's not going to work. There's too much of uh, a noise, like I just need something cleaner. Uh, do, 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 do. Metal lead too. Let's just try that. Here we go. So. I've got a guitar tone coming out of contact, and this is the Shreddage Hydra. It's very popular. I see a lot of people do this stuff on there. Now let me put out Riffer. And then between Easy Keys and Shred... So Easy Keys Tools plus this Shreddage Riffer, that's a great way to get quote-unquote easy guitar. Because when you open up Easy Keys, you get all the scale conforming in the grid editor and you can really just program program out theory relative scales so 
That's one thing I'm going to pitch in the future. Sean's thought of that, by the way. My ego is kind of buttoning in a little bit. But then I started grabbing Riffer and putting it on the shreddage, and boy, is it hilarious. <laughs> so check this out. This is hilarious. So I want 16th notes. Let's go to uh, B. Let's do B Phrygian. So we have a sour note in there. The second is flat. I'm gonna lock my density because that's more of a, an EDM effect. 16th notes. See if I can get this right out the gate. I want more root notes than normal. And I don't want it to play that low. I want the register to be up here. So let's start at C4. <laughs> let's see what happens. Now let's change that loop every two measures. Staccato notes, the kind of staccato. Let's sustain the notes. So it works pretty darn good. Now I want phrases, so out of 16, 16 notes, maybe I don't want 16 notes. I want some gaps in there. So I'm going to turn on... No, I'm just going to adjust. Let's say I want 12 notes. Here. That was a phrase right there. So maybe I want to limit the amount of notes it plays so it's really stuck in like a box. So I can limit the amount of notes it can see. Oh, I'm on density. My bad. Here we go. What's cool about this, it's a new pattern every two bars. So I can make it kind of keep ascending. Like this. Oh, I'm up, I'm off the fretboard. Uh, fretboard on a 24 frets. That'd probably be an E5. So where's E5? Here we go. You know, even if you don't know the theory of your fretboard. When it comes to software instruments, it's good to at least know the note where your range stops. I think it's an E5. That's a cool riff. I'll take off loop, and now I have that riff. And now I can export that as a MIDI file and, and use it in a production if I want. So that's kind of like between riffer and easy keys, you can kind of get a form of easy guitar. It's pretty fantastic. It's pretty cool. And I can instantly drop the octave. That sounds pretty darn cool. Let me turn the loop back on. Bring the melody up. Now I'm off the fretboard. That was cool. I think that's super cool. I was when I first did this a, a little while ago. I mean, I went under the hood and really did some tweaking, and I was like, "Holy crap!" I have a mechanical version of Inve Inve next to me, you know. And this is just me going off the top of my head and getting it to work. And freaking hey, it did work, man. Let's get back up to sixteen. <laughs> Let's raise the tempo. <laughs> See if I can crash this sucker. I mean, if you're desperate for a guitar solo and you just don't have the skills, 
that riff, let me turn off loop so I don't lose that. That riff, this riff sounds good. <laughs> oh, man. Toys, dude, toys. Is that knock super cool? Let me uh, plug that riffer one more time. Here, uh, if you're interested in riffer, check it out here. Here's the, the links in the, um, in the description and in the chat. Let's see, would that virtual guitar software read MIDI from Guitar Pro? Will that virtual guitar software read MIDI? It's, well, um, it's not supposed to read MIDI. It generates MIDI, so. Um, oh, 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 virtual guitar software being shreddage, right? Yes, definitely. It will read MIDI. Definitely. You just grab them. You, you launch, if you buy it, you buy Contact. You load up Shreddage 3 in contact, and then you just drag your MIDI right here, and it will read it right up. Let's do a little proof of concept real quick. Um, let's see. Do a quick proof of concept. Uh, riffer was right here. I will export this riff right here that I was just playing, save it as a MIDI file, desktop. Just call it dude because I'm like, dude, that's so sick. Uh, you know, Media Explorer. Here's that dude MIDI file. That's what it sounds like if Easy Drummer plays it. And I'll drag it on the shreddage. And proof of concept is now I will delete Riffer and let's just hope it works or I'm talking a bunch of BS. So there it is, buddy. Right there. This is uh, Shreddage 3 reading whatever MIDI you import as long as it's standard MIDI. Metal Machine, that's your favorite? That's an oldie. I All right, I love the ambience of it. Well, you and I, Stephen, both like older ones because I like metal with the exclamation point easy axe and both of those kind of hold hands and walk off into the sunset together, you know? All right, guys, what time we got? Yeah, I'm three minutes out. Stream was a little interesting today. I didn't have Anthony, the one of my most amazing, fantastic friends with me, backing me up. Next time I might reach out to uh, Scott and Steve and maybe you guys can help me co-host. Doesn't take much effort besides uh, telling me I'm messing up and uh, let me know if good comments came through. Look at all these members' comments in here, man. I really appreciate you guys. Check out Riffer if you like it. Do click on the link that I provided and uh, I'm surprised we still have 28 people here. Thank you so much for tuning in. And for you lurkers that didn't comment, all you got to do is hit subscribe and you'll be able to comment. And if you don't want to stay subscribed, you can unsubscribe. I'm going to check out this chat in a day or two once this video renders out and the chat comes back. Darren, what's up, man? Darren's a new tune track customer and one of my old buddies. Welcome, dude. Uh, I'm not doing longer streams, Brack. So this is, uh, I actually have to leave this stream so I can go to a job that actually helps me pay the bills. You know, that's why I can only do what I can do. John, I appreciate you so much, John. Thank you so much for your 20 earlier. It really makes my day. And I saw some unique new names today. Thank you for stopping by. Thanks for lighting up the chat. Uh, really appreciate your attendance. Um, I did, oh, let me, let me link one more thing to you guys. Today was an interesting off day. Uh, where am I going? Let me see here. Do, do, do. Today was an interesting off day because the main thing I wanted to do about hybrid kits, I realized I would lose a lot of people on it. But uh, let me link you guys one more thing, which is my questionnaire. So you can request live vids or questions on my live stream if any of of you guys are interested in it. And let me just get the link for that before I go. Do, 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 send, copy. There we go. All right. So check out this form if you guys ever want to uh, call this request form. Uh, check out this form. If you guys ever want to try and drive the vehicle and, and 
you know, you be the GPS and I will be the car that drives your directions, possibly. Thank you, Braxel. Thank you, John, Steve, Scott, Darren, what's up? Oh, it keeps going. Um, and Digitare, thanks for showing up. I don't recognize your name. Andante, go nuts, learn it in complete control. Andante's on uh, complete as well. Yeah, I, you know, probably about 15 years ago, I bought one of their complete bundles and I upgraded every three or four years. You know, I don't upgrade it every year. It's too much money, but every few years. Andante, thanks for your presence. One of these days, I'll remember you from Michigan and not uh, Illinois. That's totally my bad, dude. At least you share a, uh, a great lake water. Mark, thanks for coming. Small Tubes, appreciate you coming back. I'm going to call, guys. Stay tuned, man. I've been pumped. I pumped out content nonstop last month. And members, um, I did try to do a video just for you guys last week, and I had computer problems the same day. So apologies for that. Expect a member's exclusive video in about a week or so. It will either be on the grid editor or it'll be about um, mixing. So one or the other. Uh, and if you guys don't know what I'm talking about, check the description, become a Patreon, and become a member and get exclusive content. Thank you so much, guys. Peace.